Hey guys, um, it's been a while. I've been out of a job and not really wanting to do anything, so it's been kind of blah. I don't even want to do my hair, so you get the wig. Uh, today I will be discussing a book called Exquisite Corpse by Poppy Z. Bright. Um, it's a doozy, alright. It's, it's a book that was written. When I first started reading this book, I noticed very much so that one of the characters, Jay, reminded me very, very much of Jeffrey Dahmer. Then, doing some research on it, come to find out this book is actually a Jeffrey Dahmer cross uh, Dennis Nilsson fan fiction. So there's that information. Do with it what you will. So I'm going to be going through this book by uh, chapter by chapter. So that'll be something a little bit different. Anyway, let's get into it. Um, chapter one. We meet Andrew Compton. He's our Dennis Nilsson. Um, he's a necrophiliac serial killer currently in prison for murdering 23 young men. Uh, while in prison, he discovers he is HIV positive. Um, this book has a lot to do with the AIDS epidemic, and I just want to insert here that I think the play Rent sucks because uh, I'm not ever going to get a platform to talk about this ever again. Speaking of AIDS, Rent sucks. It's pouty, whiny brats. And I think that um, the landlord is actually the good guy in this play. So there's that. Anyway, um, Andrew discovers he's HIV positive. Um, he's somehow able to stop his breathing and his heart to appear dead. The guards take him to a local hospital because they don't want to mess with the AIDS blood. Um, so they take him to a local ho hospital for an autopsy. There he murders two doctors and steals a car making his way to London. Um, this takes place in Birmingham. 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 This takes place in Birmingham. Um, I have to say it like I fuck sheep or something. Anyway, Birmingham. Next chapter, we are introduced to Jay Byrne. He is a man from New Orleans with a fondness, with a fondness for young transient men. Uh, he is buying drugs from a young man named Tran. He tells Tran that he's a photographer and asks if he can take nude portraits of him. Tran turns him down, explaining that there's this huge rave going on that night. Um, Tran is definitely interested, though. He tells him maybe another night, and he even invites Jay to the, the rave, um, which Jay turns him down. That's not really Jay's scene. Jay then goes to buy coffee and runs into a homeless looking punk kid. Um, the kid comes up and asks to be Jay's pet. Can I come home and be your pet with you? And which is so Lana Del Rey coquette. It's ridiculous. Jay says if he's going to be his pet, he needs to obey his every command and lick his hand when he pets him. Jay reaches out and caresses the boy's head. The boy puts Jay's fingers into his mouth, sucking on them gently. Just call me Fido, he says. Which I think would be funny if he was like, no, you're a snowball, for sure. Chapter 3, we switch over to Tran. Um, he makes it home from the rave and finds his father sitting on his bed. Um, he found explicit love letters from his older boyfriend, or older ex-boyfriend, Luke. Um, the letters go into their, go into detail about their sexual exploits and heroin use. Um, his father implies suspicion that Tran had possibly abused his young twin brothers, and Tra Tran loses it because he would never, um, 
he tells his dad, just give me a few hours in the morning and I'll move all my stuff out and I'll go live out of my car in the French Quarter. Next, we go back to Andrew Compton, who made his way to London and is looking for a man with similar look and stature to himself. Uh, he finds a man named Sam, uh, an American tourist, and he lures him back to the public toilets. Uh, he takes the scalpel that he had brought with him and stabs him and cuts his throat. Um, he takes Sam's wallet, intending to impersonate Sam. Uh, and then he makes his way for the airport. He buys several tickets to different places with Sam's credit cards and he chooses to take the flight to Georgia. Uh, we take a little visit to Jay's house, a sprawling manor because he's a man who comes from money. Jay is admiring his pet as his pet slowly bleeds out in the bathtub. Uh, he had been mutilated and Jay should be put on like an adoption watch list. He shouldn't be allowed to adopt. Next chapter we meet Luke, Tran's ex-boyfriend, and it turns out he is also HIV positive. Uh, he recalls a time when Tran cheated on him and then goes to work uh, as a terrible radio talk show host, Lush Rimbaugh, he goes by. Um, it's a pirate show, so it's a pirated show, so they um, go out in a boat on the bayou and hijack a radio signal to put on this show. And he just spouts like hateful rhetoric, like um, encouraging the murdering of breeders and all this kind of stuff. He plays a Nine Inch Nails song dedicated to his lost love, and he wonders if he's out there listening. Next we're back with Tran, who goes over to Jay's house, asking him to come in. Uh, Jay tells Tran to come back in an hour. In that time, he dismembers the transient boy's body and hides it in bags in the old slave quarters out behind his house. He also hides the Polaroids that he took of the body along with the hundreds of others. Tran comes back over and turns on the radio. Uh, it's playing a Nine Inch Nails song. Uh, Jay has resolved not to touch Tran because he's a local kid, and Jay only tortures and kills out-of-towner runaways that won't be missed. Tran gets on Jay's lap and begins to make out with him. Uh, the song ends, and he hears Luke's voice speaking to him through the radio. He freaks out, and he tells Jay the story about how they broke up. Um, Luke had found out that he was HIV positive and he tried to inject his blood into Tran's arm. Um, I want you to love me forever, he said. He also tells Jay that his family kicked him out of the house for being gay. Jay tells Tran he thinks Tran should leave and Tran begs Jay to let him stay. Um, things get a little hot and heavy. Uh, Jay gives Tran a blowjob. Tran begs Jay to have sex with him, but Tran, Jay is very certain that if he has sex with Tran, that he will murder him, which is not good because it's not part of his, you know, his careful code. You know, he only murders out of town boys. So he resists the temptation, um, but he does allow Tran to stay the night. Uh, Jay falls asleep and Tran goes to make himself a sandwich with some kind of mystery meat from the fridge. Um, the next chapter really is just about how Luke loves young Asian men. Um, he recalls meeting Tran at a party. Tran was 19 and Luke was 30. Uh, he found some success as a writer slash poet. So while Luke's reminiscing, Jay goes out to his slave quarters after Tran leaves, and he tries to make do with uh, looking at and interacting with all of his bodies that he has out there. He's got like heads in jars and stuff like that, and all kinds of like torsos and stuff in freezers. Um, but it's not enough. He still needs to kill someone. He's he's cruising for a bruising. So he goes out to find 
um, some young out-of-town kid. Uh, Andrew ends up flying to New Orleans and met a man named Jay in a bar. Uh, they hit it off and soon they're making out near the bathrooms. Jay leads Andrew to his home where they continue to make out. Jay handcuffs Andrew to his chair and Andrew grabs Jay by the legs and holds a corkscrew to Jay's throat. Uh, and it's just this funny like, oh you were gonna kill me? I was gonna kill you! Kind of a, a moment with the two of them. Uh, Andrew demands that Jay set him free. Jay takes a head out of a freezer and drops the handcuff keys inside the mouth to kind of see how Andrew would react. Andrew is unfazed by this and he just grabs the head and retrieves the handcuff keys and yeah, and then they realize how much that they have in common. Uh, Jay takes Andrew out to his shed and shows him a body he has hanging from a hook. Andrew ravages the body. Uh, Jay licks the remaining viscera off of Andrew's body. They go take a shower together and fall asleep. Tran meets up with his friend Soren. Uh, they go eat lunch together. The topic falls back on Luke, and Soren mentions that he had contact with him, and he's in pretty rough shape over the breakup. Uh, Tran determines that Soren is part of Luke's radio pirate show, his pirate radio show. Um, and then Soren admits that he is also HIV positive as well. Soren mentions his encounter with Jay Byrne the night before, and Soren tells Tran the story of Jay's ancestor who murdered 15 young boys. Um, he's basically like, what are you doing with that guy? He's a weirdo. Don't go near him. And we'll find out if Tran listens or not. So Jay and Andrew bonded over their shared hobby. Um, Andrew had been very curious about why Jay ate their bodies and Jay suggested he try it. Just try it. You'll like it. Um, Andrew supposed he was afraid to try it. They went for a walk and they ended up in a goth bar. They ran into Tran. Um, Andrew introduces himself as Jay's cousin Arthur and they have a small chat with Tran. Andrew immediately is like, I want to eat that kid. That's the person I want to eat for the first time I eat somebody. Um, Jay is like, absolutely not. He's a local kid. Um, so instead they pick up some junkie kid begging for change. Uh, they promise him morphine and a place to shower. Once the kid, I say kid, but he's in like his early 20s. Um, once the kid is all doped up, they handcuff him to the bed, and Andrew splits him open with a hunting knife. Jay rips the kid open a little wider to find that um, the kid is covered with little white pustules inside. Um, so Jay determines that they can't eat him because he's infected with something. Uh, suddenly, Andrew takes Jay's handcuffs off of the boy and places them around Jay's wrists. Uh, he puts a condom on and proceeds to rape Jay. Uh, Jay tells him that if he's going to rape him, he should take off the condom. And so he does. And that's a scene that happens. That is Dennis Nilsson and Jeffrey Dahmer having sex. So Luke talks about Andrew Compton's disappearance from the morgue in his uh, radio show and he looks over the newspaper clipping and sees a picture of Andrew. Um, he takes a call that upsets him and he goes to Soren and Johnny, his two friends that help him out with the radio show, and he's like, look, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, it doesn't make me happy. I don't want to do it. And his buddy Johnny was like, that's okay, I was going to kill myself anyway. So, uh, 
Um, and then Johnny pulls out a, a gun and he's like, I want you guys to be with me when I do this. So Luke and Soren watch as Johnny puts a bullet in his brains. Um, Luke kicks him off of the boat and there an alligator takes him under um, on his way back to New Orleans Soren asks what Luke is going to do when Tran doesn't take him back um, that's the other thing that um, that's the other thing that uh, Luke said is he only thinks he's only thinking about getting Tran back and winning Tran over so that's all he wants to do with his life is get Tran back so Soren's driving him home and he's like, you know he's got another guy that he's seeing. After some rough convincing, Soren uh, tells, admits to having lunch with Tran the previous week and that Tran told him about his new boyfriend, Jay Byrne. Soren asked Luke to come home with him after that. Uh, he does and they have sex and once Soren is asleep like after 10 p.m. ish Luke walks out um, on his way to the French Quarter to find Tran and Jay. Meanwhile Andrew and Jay dispose of the boy's body in hydrochloric acid not wanting to keep it because of how diseased it looked. Um, when they return to Jay's house Jay phones Tran's hotel and invites him to dinner at his house. Uh, Tran accepts because he is a dummy. Uh, once there, they get Tran quite drunk. Um, he gives Andrew a blowjob before they move to the bedroom. Um, and when they had when they had Tran naked and splayed out on the bed, Jay takes a screwdriver from his bedside table and just just jams it right up Tran's ass. Um, Tran is shocked with pain and fear and he runs away. Um, and although Andrew and Jay are both giving chase, Tran is able to get away. Um, then Jay takes off to go find him. Uh, next chapter shows a small crowd had gathered around Tran, including two cops. Jay shows up and tells the officers that Tran lives with him and he'll take him home. Uh, Tran gives... not Tran... Jay gives uh, the cops his ID along with money. Um, and says that Tran's name is John and John is his boyfriend and they're gonna go home. Tran was too drunk and injured to speak up so the cops let Jay take him away just like that Jeffrey Dahmer situation that happened. Um, there's a street musician who urges them to call police but he is threatened because he's the only black character in the book and police do that kind of thing. Meanwhile Luke is searching for Jay's house and Luke happens to see the commotion down the street. So Luke approaches the men and tells the cops that he knows that boy. He tells the police that his name's not John, it's Tran. And what are you doing? Can't you see that this boy is hurt? Why are you letting this man take him away? And Luke just watches as Jay passes more money to the officers and lunged for Tran. He he tries to grab Tran up and the police pin him to the wall and threaten him. Then they escort Jay and Tran back home. So yeah. A cab everybody. Tran awoke to being strapped to a metal table and Andrew giving him a blowjob. There's lots of blowjobs in this book. Um, they clamped his nipples and they informed him that they are going to kill him. 
uh, Andrew begins to rape him, and Jay cuts him from his breastbone to his crotch. Um, Jay begins to chomp down on his guts, um, and shared the meat with Andrew, and it's like they were bobbing for apples, just chomping down on this kid. Um, at last, Tran closes his eyes and does not open them again. Luke sneaks into the backyard of Jay's house when he hears Jay or when he hears Tran scream. Um, Luke crashes through the window and finds Jay and Andrew covered in Tran's blood. Um, Tran dead on the wheeled table. So Luke retrieves a razor that he always keeps in his boot and he flipped the table over onto Jay and pinning him. Um, Luke leaps on top of Jay and slits his throat. Andrew runs to Jay's side, and Luke recognizes him from the papers. He asks Andrew to kill him. Andrew ignores Luke and licks at Jay's wound and takes him into the house. He gives Jay a bath, and he has his way with his body. Um, then he strips a piece of meat from Jay, uh, fries it, and keeps it for his travel. He took Jay back to the slave quarters uh, where Luke had gone. He had disappeared. Um, Andrew caught a train uh, and ate his sandwich, wanting to keep Jay's essence in his body for as long as he could, which is not how that works. The epilogue finishes with uh, Jay and Tran's bodies le being left to rot, uh, Luke shooting up heroin and deciding that he is going to finish his book. And that's so much for my Ted Bundy cross Eileen Wuornos fanfiction. Um, so great. So that was Exquisite Corpse. The similarities between um, the characters and the serial killers that they were based off of. Uh, it's very egregious. Um, they even include the story of one of Dennis Nielsen's um, victims who is a skinhead and he's got a tattoo that says cut here along his throat. That actually happened in real life. Um, and it happens in this book too. So there's that. There's um, the way that Dennis Nilsson was sort of caught because he had to move houses and he didn't have anywhere to store his bodies, the bodies of his boys. Um, there's that in there. There's the story about uh, Dahmer's victim um, and the police giving him back to them and uh, the Polaroids that he kept of the boys. Um, it was just... It's, it's a fan fiction. That's all I can say about it. Um, it was beautifully written um, I think that the author has talent. I don't think it was, um, a poorly written fan fiction, um, but it was fan fiction nonetheless. So, there you have it. Yeah, that's about it. Um, I'll have my summer book list coming out here in a little while. Um, I've been reading a lot of books from this list of, uh, analog horror novels, which has been pretty cool lately, so I hope to go over some of those, and yeah, that's about it. I love you guys, and I will see you next time. Bye!